Hello, everyone. Um, can can you see this slides right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was some <laughs> different uh, changes in the plan to make this presentation. First of all, I need, wanted to make this in person, but uh, suddenly uh, one of my uh, family members got COVID, so I need to be here. And uh, I was expected uh, to use a pre-recorded video, but uh, well, uh, here we are now. Uh, this uh, talk is... Uh, some kind of uh, collection of war stories uh, about uh, embedded things uh, which I collected from my work, my colleagues, or uh, colleagues from other companies. Uh, so short uh, about me. Um, I am part of uh, Kernel Hacker team at uh, Pingotronics. And uh, what I, I'm doing or what uh, uh, my team is doing is mostly can be compared like continuous uh, research and development and uh, main learning of everything what we did. Uh, so with other words, I can say usually what I do, I have no idea what I'm doing. First, I need to learn and then <laughs> mainline things. Um, by preparing this talk, I just tried to make uh, the world some kind of easy for my understanding and I uh, split uh, it to two categories like not embedded things and embedded so I'm expecting that uh, you are who are present in this room um, are working on not embedded things for example like uh, servers workstations I have no idea what else can be called not embedded and for embedded things, I just split it to even more categories because uh, I had a bit more experience with this. And um, I can call this like uh, things uh, which are nailed to the buildings somehow, like industrial or building automation, things which are driving on the roads or fields, uh, like automotive, agriculture, transportation. Um, things which are on water or seas like marine and uh, flying in the air, aircraft things or uh, in the space, spacecraft, spacecrafts. Uh, no idea if you have more ideas how to split all of this more granularly. Um, in any case, I tried to uh, gather uh, some ideas from my colleagues uh, how this can be better explained or understood and uh, in this uh, area, we found even more confusion uh, because, well, if you ask someone what is embedded developer, they'll probably get a picture like this. And uh, if you are talking about things which are embedded, uh, this is really hard to define what is modern embedded device and how it's compared with traditional explanation of embedded. Uh, so probably it is something what is built in to something. Uh, it is designed to fit some special task or reduced to fit some special task. It consumes less power uh, potentially or has less CPU power. So usually if I'm talking about, wow, this is very high speed device. I mean, wow, we have 10 megabit per second now. <laughs> And uh, you probably will expect something like uh, 100 gigabit interface or whatever. Uh, it is uh, usually some kind of specially configured system to do one job and do it as best as possible. And uh, usually if we are talking or dealing with embedded devices, they could potentially have some networking connection, but this connection is not connected to intranet or internet. Mostly it is part of a networking segment within a car, like uh, connected with uh, different sensors and actuators. So this can be the part of the definition of embedded, but as soon as we start to compare this with kind of not embedded devices, uh, then the confusion will be even more. 
let's try to see some examples. This is potentially a, a clear example of embedded device. On the right side, we have a car which has a built-in infotainment system. Uh, this system is running uh, Volkswagen OS, or which is based on Linux. And I hope this is a clear definition of embedded without doubts. Uh, just by accident, uh, cl uh, close to this car was other Volkswagen uh, uh, member, which uh, has absolutely nothing embedded at all. Uh, but uh, it's probably not really related to this talk. Uh, another example is uh, agriculture use case. Uh, in most modern tractors, uh, we have uh, some kind of uh, Linux-based terminal, which is connected to the ISOBUS, uh, which is based on CAN. And uh, on the other side of this bus, uh, we may have uh, different sensors or even a trailer, uh, which has an integrated controller. Uh, modern trailers may have even controller based on Linux. So you can uh, configure this uh, seeding machine or whatever is attached to this. And uh, this is probably uh, one of good embedded examples as well. At this point, things are starting to be a bit more confusing. This is uh, one uh info information uh, terminal on uh, the bus station in germany in hildesheim uh, which should provide information about uh, uh, schedule of the buses and as we can see uh, this uh, device is probably per hardware definition is a good example of embedded thing which is well which is integrated to the bus station it is uh from hardware perspective is designed for one task, uh, but actual software part, which is used there, is more like a general type of uh, uh, Debian distribution with uh, a desktop, probably XFCA or something like this. And uh, it was definitely not designed to do one task as it should do, so it's failed. Uh, I assume there's a bit more software which is not needed by this kind of device. Next example, if we talk about things which are embedded into something or integrated into something, uh, well, we have a rack and the server is integrated into the rack, so it's kind of built in. So embedded definition probably fails here. And uh, I assume at the same rake, we will find uh, some kind of switch, which usually or traditionally called as embedded device. And inside of the same rake or the same server, we'll have some kind of management engine, engines or um, uh, some um, network adapters with a huge uh, software stack, uh, which is sometimes even based on Linux. Uh, so we will probably have like state in the state, embedded into in, integrated in not embedded device. Uh, so with more examples, uh, this definition start to get a bit more fuzzy. And this one uh, just uh, extra example. Well, uh, we can ga take a gaming PC or whatever. This kind of PC can be called. Uh, it is built into the wall or under the wall. And uh, it is probably designed for a single task like show off or just gaming. Uh, so the embedded definition, which was used in the beginning of this talk, this is embedded device, but uh, potentially this is not. <laughs> um, so we can take even even more examples, but it uh, will be uh, even more uh, unclear and fuzzy. Um, so what actually is embedded and <laughs> why this talk is called embedded devices, uh, this is probably was just first idea to call it, but we should better use uh, sin, uh, exact use cases of uh, what, how it's used like automotive or industrial or whatever. Um, 
because uh, embedded or not embedded is a very bad uh, abstraction for this use case. So if everything is uh, not so clear, uh, why should we have this talk? Uh, well, uh, from my experience, uh, at previous NetDev conferences, we have noticed that uh, uh, our work influence each other from different perspectives. For example, if we are working on uh, one side on different kinds of routers or uh, servers, uh, we implement uh, protocols or queuing disciplines or whatever, which influence other projects which are using this. And one of uh, examples for some years, uh, back for some years, was uh, introduction of FQ Codel. Uh, this was a really good uh, queuing discipline for uh, uh, one of use cases or for many use cases, but uh, for our devices, which use uh, Ethernet, controllers, uh, Ethernet interfaces, uh, combine it with CAN interfaces, uh, we needed to find a better, better way to uh, enable FQ Codel for complete system, but exclude it from CAN interfaces and make it as uh, transparent as possible. So after explaining different use cases and uh, talking with uh, uh, actual developers of uh, Q code that we was able to define a better solution. So it's work now. So it is more like uh, meeting aliens somehow, because uh, most of uh, this industry directions like automotive, industrial, and so on uh, was kind of isolated by using closed source or being as prepared as possible. Um, so after uh, after starting to uh, adopting uh, open source and machine learning strategies, uh, uh, different kind of pushes and protocols from this uh, uh, industry industrial directions uh, started to leak into the main line. Uh, and uh, this was a new challenge for uh, community and maintainers uh, who are deal with uh, this kind of new technology or, well, it's probably not so new, but uh, technology which is not so common for many uh, people. If we take any example from uh, any of these directions, for example, we take an automotive as a beginning part. So we have a car which has an uh, integrated network and it has uh, some kind of boost uh, with uh, sensors, actuators, controllers, which are all interconne interconnected. Uh, we can adopt this example to any other industry like uh, automotive or, or I, mean, I mean automation, uh, house, uh, building automation or industrial. And in all of these cases, we'll have uh, something similar. Uh, and probably instead of can, we'll get some other bus uh, and the stand of a uh, wheel or uh, uh, motor controller will have uh, something different, but uh, we, the major abstraction will be the same. Uh, besides, at least uh, the CAN bus was mainline, but most of other buses are not. Uh, so what is the common in uh, most of uh, industrial or embedded kind of projects? Uh, usually if we analyze uh, all of special things, uh, it is more about reducing the weight, reducing cost and re reducing power consumption. And uh, with this perspective was designed uh, many of buses which are used. For example, in automotive, you have uh, CAN, CANFD, LIN, FlixRay and uh, so on. Uh, if you can see the speeds we, where we are dealing uh, and these buses are not so high, 
like the lean bus is 20 kilobits per second, the typical CAN bus is 500 kilobits per second, and so on. Uh, and this isn't uh, this isn't scaling anymore with modern automotive designs. Um, we have a lot of sensors, a lot of more sensors. We have cameras, so you need to stream videos to actually processing units. We have infotainment systems uh, with uh, need of a lot of internet and uh, whatever. Uh, so we need new technology to replace all these uh, ancient buses. And uh, well, while reinventing the wheel, we can use Ethernet, at least theoretically. But practically, it is not so easy to just apply this technology. So we needed to uh, adopt new or invent new standards based on Ethernet. Uh, so as a result of this work, we have a different kind of base tier one standards like 10 base tier one, 100 base tier one, and so on. And uh, here's the reason why uh, we need to uh, adapt existing Ethernet standards is first of all, for example, typical car, typical modern car uh, has a lot of cables. Uh, the cables, uh, cable harness can reach like 70 kilos, probably more. And uh, if you will just adopt a uh, gigabit, a standard gigabit Ethernet, you'll need to uh, have four twisted pairs for just one link. And this is not acceptable. So for this use case uh, was developed uh, the one uh, standard which is using one twisted pair for a gigabit link or for 10 uh, mbit or 100 mbit. Um, since we started to use one twisted pair for pair link, uh, we can't adopt any more things like power over Ethernet, which are uh, working with uh, two, uh, at least two twisted pairs. So for this special use case uh, was developed a new standard, which is called power over data line. And uh, if you started to reducing weights by uh, optimizing things, uh, so was introduced new standard 10 base day one S, uh, which is a multi-drop Ethernet. So we don't need to use a switch or bridge uh, for, to interconnecting uh, different uh, uh, sensors. Uh, for example, in the cars, it will uh, have different standards at the same time. Uh, some uh, car segment would have 10 base day one s just uh, to cover small group of sensors. For example, front left and front, front right uh, sensor group and uh, using some other links like 1000 base day one to attach a camera sensor. Yeah, um, other things which are new, kind of new uh, and uh, needed to change Ethernet standard is uh, support of auto negotiation. Uh, typical auto negotiation uh, link uh, takes uh, at least some seconds to negotiate a link and uh, this is not acceptable for automotive use. So you'll need to uh, optimize it out and remove uh, auto negotiation. Uh, in this case, you should use uh, all uh, devices with pre configured uh, configuration, role, speed, and so on. And uh, from this requirement, we have uh, some extra challenges like. Uh, if we can't use auto negotiations, we uh, should pre-configure clock provider and clock consumer roles of phi. 
normally they are negotiated automatically. This means we need new interfaces and uh, user space, UIPs, uh, and so on. This is already mainlined, uh, and you can configure master or slave role of the FI with ETH tools. Uh, from this uh, requirement and this configuration, we have a bit more challenges like some files uh, can be accessed over MDAO interface uh, until they established the link to the clock provider, until they don't have remote clock provider. The file is just uh, dead from our perspective. And uh, there's more challenges for, for um, ability to run uh, cable diagnostic, which is essential for FICE or for uh, automotive as well, is that uh, we can't run cable diagnostic from the slave device, from the slave FI. So we should carefully make a design that uh, we are able to make complete uh, cable diagnostic for all segments and every part which is connected to the uh, diagnostic interface should be always the master. Uh, if you'll just leave now the automotive industry, uh, let's try to see what other kind of industries uh, have to deal with and here's one example is uh, some kind of uh, explosive environments uh, where which have to deal with uh, gas uh, gases uh, dust or fibers and so on and electrical devices may uh, be a source of uh, ignition uh, for this environment uh, so you can see what will happen on uh, this picture to deal with it uh, we need uh, standards first of all we need to define what kind of zones do we have inside of industrial environment uh, and for these different types of zones we will be able to define requirements for electronic devices for example, if you see on the right side, this is example from uh, UK uh, standards. Uh, and this uh, environment is split into three zones. The red one is the zone 20, which is most explosive or has the uh, longest period of uh, dealing with uh, gases or uh, infl uh, flammable things. Uh, the zone at 21, which is in the middle, is uh, uh, has uh, little, uh, so mid, mid, medium uh, explosiveness. <laughs> uh, the dust or fibers flying in this area uh, are likely to exist, but uh, are not permanent. And the yellow part is uh, more unlikely to deal with explosive environment. Uh, after splitting uh, environment to, into different zones, we have uh, different requirements for the hardware, uh, like it should be flame proof uh, in some cases, uh, in some cases it should be sand filled and encapsulated uh, uh, enough to deal with uh, extra pressure or uh, injecting some inflammable uh, uh, things in, into the device. And uh, first of all, it should not be not sparking. Uh, so how it's related to networking. Uh, we have now uh, Ethernet uh, with uh, configurable uh, amplitude. Uh, to make sure that uh, end devices which uh, are 
designed for explosive environment uh, will not uh, be not provide uh, provide any sparks. Uh, for example, if the device is uh, designed for explosive environment, it should be configured for uh, one volt peak to peak uh, signal. And uh, in case we are dealing with not envi uh, explosive environment and need extra range support, uh, we should be able to configure this device to 2.4 volt peak to peak. This is the new standard for uh, this is the new Ethernet standard, and uh, just this here we added support for this standard to the kernel. Um, some extra challenges uh, are coming to us. For example, uh, if uh, some if we have certified if we have the, a device which is certified for explosive environment. And it will see per auto negotiation that the external link or link partner supports 2.4 volt peak to peak. Then we should refuse the link with this device. Uh, and uh, well, this is something which is currently not support in kernel, and uh, we'll need to see how how what is the best way to integrate this thing in the future. Next, we'll have some more examples from uh, other colleagues. Here is uh, one of example provided by uh, Bootlins developer Maxim uh, is a dual phi configuration where a second phi or um, this part of configuration is used to um, have uh, extra redundancy, but not in STP way. Uh, we have here only one Mac, and we cover only redundancy of the physical cable link. Uh, this is good enough to cover many use cases, but is a challenging part to integrate uh, into existing kernel even now, because uh, we started with the assumption that each Mac has a one phi, and uh, now we'll need to abstract, have provide a new abstraction and uh, new um, interfaces for user to be able to see different files and to be able to uh, run different kind of diagnostic on this files, for example, you should be able to see if there is a link on one Y instead of phi zero and uh, trying to run cable tests and so on. For example, cable tests is supported by, by HGATH uh, tools, but it is supported per interface and not per phi. Uh, the next example is uh, using multiple phi's to extend uh, functionality. Sometimes the end product should have more supported functions or supported standards as a single file can provide. In this case, uh, sometimes we have products with uh, multiple files which support multiple different standards. For example, uh, we have a file which support 10 base day one L, but not supporting 100 base day one but both of them are able to work with single pair uh, Ethernet. So you need to integrate both files with some kind of MOOCSA to be able to cover this kind of standards. The same can be uh, uh, used by CAN. For example, we have uh, files which support just simple CAN and uh, files which support only single wire CAN and sometimes we need to combine both of them. And probably right now with uh, chip shortage uh, challenges, there's even, this example is probably even more actual because uh, it is harder to get uh, parts which support multiple standards at the same time. 
Uh, the next example is probably more relevant for uh, devices with uh, SFP cage. So we have uh, in case uh, in case we uh, apply um, uh, attach a um, uh, model with a simple transmitter, uh, the Mac uh, the Phi zero. Uh, should be able uh, should be configured to, for example, to 1000 base T. Uh, but as soon as we uh, attach different model with uh, integrated Phi, then we should reconfigure Phi zero to SGMI uh, interface. And uh, in this case, uh, it is uh, currently hard to integrate or uh, properly to apply this to currently existing uh, Linux kernel. Uh, because we can't deal with uh, multiple files independent on uh, if it's implemented in series or in parallel. So all of these uh, challenges are related to Linux. Uh, we have to mainline many different things. Some of them are already mainlined, for example, 100 base T1, 1000 base T1, and 10 base T1L was mainlined last years, or maybe some of them just this year. Uh, configuration of uh, clock rule like master slave uh, was already main mainlined for back for some years. Uh, some things like configuration of uh, Amplitude is currently not mainlined and uh, not really supported. Mostly it just works, but uh, it needs a bit more investigation and uh, cooperation with community. Uh, this amplitude configuration uh, can depend on some on different kind of policies, like uh, if you need to reduce uh, uh, noise radiation and so on, uh, we would need to prefer one volt and so on. There are different policies. And uh, we need to be able to uh, abort the link or uh, prevent the link uh, between link partners if they have some kind of, if they announce uh, some kind of abilities or in the opposite way, if they do not announce some kind of capabilities, uh, not uh, just creating the link as soon as it's possible. And uh, with uh, the multi-partner standard 10 base T1S, uh, we have a, a link segment with one master and multiple slaves without any kind of uh, bridges between of them. Uh, so you'll need to deal with this as well. So it's kind of back to the future. We have 10 base 2 somehow with a, again. <laughs> uh, yes, this is all of my examples. If you have questions, more examples or comments, uh, please, you are welcome. So if there's no questions from the in-person or from remotes to remotes, then we can probably take a break now. <laughs>